Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Ultimate Iron Man episode number 10. And we literally just finished Priest and Pearl to unlock Mauritania. Yeah, you can see right here, quest complete. Uh, more specifically, I want to unlock Mauritania for the Canifus Rooftop course, because that's the fastest way to get Marks of Grace for Graceful. Getting full Graceful is the next thing I want to unlock on the account. And then once we get Graceful, we can start doing a bunch of questing and stuff. But we'll focus on one thing at a time. So we're starting with level 40 agility. We have 34 Marks of Grace. Let's head into Canifus and start this grind. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's been so long since I've done all these low level early game grinds. I want to say it was like 15 hours or something. I have no idea. My numbers are probably way off. Let's just get started. And just to clarify, to buy full Graceful, it costs 260 marks of grace. I feel like every time I do a rooftop course, it finishes a task, but apparently that was a uh, medium Mauritania task. 700 total level with that agility level right there. Look at the positive vibes. Big Red Japan V2. Uh, a little check in 50 agility, and we're almost halfway to the Marks of Grace that we need. We could do the Faldor course now, but it's less Marks of Grace and only slightly faster XP, and I'd rather just get Graceful as soon as possible. If you start the Canifus course right at 40 agility, I believe you can expect to get all the Marks of Grace you need for Graceful by level 57 or 58, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, but if you switch over to Faldor at 50 and Sears at 60, I think you usually get it around like mid 60s, like 65 agility or so, is when you get the 260 Marks of Grace. By the way, if you're wondering about my cursor, Runelite added a plugin today, if you use Runelite, called Custom Cursor. So uh, there's a couple RS3 ones, a Dragon Dagger, and the Dragon Scimitar. I feel like Slayer music now. One thing I want to say about Marks of Grace, though, for people who don't know, is that if your agility level is 20 levels over the requirement of the rooftop course that you're doing, you get 80% less Marks of Grace from that course. So if you're only getting 20% of the Marks of Grace you should be getting, it's really not worth doing that course. So for example, the requirement for the Canthus rooftop course, you know, is 40. If I'm level 60, there's no point to doing this course anymore. It's less XP per hour and less Marks per hour than Sears would be, which is the 60 requirement course. UIM Bingo starts today, and I don't think a lot of people know about it outside the UIM community, but pretty much a bunch of Ultimates got together and put together a bingo board for 15 teams of about 7 to 8 people each to compete on. It's pretty much like whichever team is able to fill up the most tiles wins, and it's not meant to be super competitive, you know, it's just a fun way to get the community together and get to know each other. And I've gotta say, from my short experience so far playing as an Ultimate, the Ultimate Iron Man community has to be the friendliest and most welcoming community in old school. Everyone is so freaking nice, man. Uh, but anyways, the reason why we're here now is because Bingo starts tonight, it's May 3rd right now, and it goes for three weeks, and I have to take screenshots of the collection log before it starts. The teams were randomly selected based on different tiers of players, I think it went by their total levels, but obviously I'm the lowest tier member on my team, so I can't help out with that much, but I'm gonna do what I can, you know, like the beginner clues and the easy clues when they come up, and it's nice because we have the treasure chest built now in the POH, so we can fill it up with any uniques we get from those lower tier clues. But the main thing I'm gonna be focusing on for the team is the 100 quest points tile. We should be able to finish Graceful tonight, so the timing works out really well to start questing right away, and we can start working towards getting that tile done for the team. Hashtag Melon Ballers. I was looking in the collection log, and if we go through the bosses and go down to Winter Frog, we got, I guess, like all the uniques that we could get from there, uh, besides the Dragon Axe, but we'll get that from DKs eventually. And when you get any drop anywhere in the game, it counts for every single boss. So once we get the Dragon Axe from DKs, it'll fill up uh, this Dragon Axe right here. So we essentially have this complete. Look at all the freaking gloves and torches we got, though. I'm really glad we started this account after the collection log came out, so that way it's going to track every single thing that we get from the start of the account. Like, even for Iron Man before, it wouldn't keep track of items you got before the collection log came out, unless they were untradeable. But it's cool that everything on this account will be tracked for the future. Let's get back to agility though and finish up that graceful. Little check in here, this is 55 agility and we're getting pretty close now to our goal of the marks of grace. Imagine me not fletching, not alking, not imbuing all at the same time. Such an XP waste. The last mark of grace for graceful, 260 marks. After this lap, let's go ahead and we're going to teleport to um Birth or Games Room because that's where it's at. I'm not going to be training agility for a while because then we get more marks of grace which are untradeable so they can't be stored in the looting bag. So when we go do waterfall quest or recruitment drive or fremnic trials, they all have parts that require no inventory and we can't just suicide to Zora or Hispori or any of those places to store untradeables because we don't have them unlocked so we have to drop any extra marks that we get. I was thinking later on what we could do if I want to grind out agility for a bit 
but I don't want to buy Amleys. We could buy more sets of Graceful with recolors and then store them in the house, and eventually, once I'm ready to buy Amleys and train Herblor, we could exchange those Graceful sets, and I think you get like 80% of your marks back. I think you get 208 marks back, and you spend 260 marks to get the set, and then we could get those marks back and buy Amleys with that. But you know, it's way later down the line and not something to worry about right now or anytime soon. Here we go, we're at Grace to buy are graceful with our marks of grace. I'm gonna try and not mess this up and get one of each piece, not like accidentally buy five or buy Amlace or something. That would suck having to go back. Here we go. Full graceful <laughs> is done just like that. It's freaking sick. And we can store this in the house too, now that we have the thing built. Look at that. We get a, uh, was it 30% uh, run energy increase when we're staying still? It's so freaking cool, dude. Look at us, we're like a noob now. Small accomplishments like this that really just feel so good. Imagine being an Iron Man, a YouTuber, and a streamer, and not having the giant squirrel pet by 56 agility. We actually got that earlier than I thought. I was expecting 58, but yeah, 56 agility, graceful is done. It's kind of late right now. It is currently 8.45 p.m. and UIM bingo starts in 15 minutes which is uh, 9 p.m. Pacific time. Not gonna lie though, I've been drinking a bit, I've been streaming today, it's been a fun day. It's been a really long day of grinding out Graceful, but it's nice to have that done. What I'm gonna do now though is teleport over to Castle Wars and AFK Woodcut for a while while I edit together this video and eat some dinner. I know we still have the steel axe, woodcutting is probably not the most efficient thing to be doing, but it's very convenient to get to. But I'm really looking forward to tomorrow to start grinding out all these quests. We're at 59 quest points. I think we can single-handedly knock out the 100 quest points over the course of the next three weeks. I don't think that'll be too rough to do. But yeah, I will catch you back tomorrow with the first quest we'll be doing. Unless uh, we get the woodcutting pet, which would be sick. I can make the trout kiss each other. <laughs> There's 78 woodcutting. I don't know if I should be recording each of these levels because I'm just AFKing the whole time, but yeah, 78 woodcutting all with the steel axe. Apparently last night I was working on like a symbol for the series. Like, you know how right now I guess the trademark or whatever for the thumbnails putting the UIM in there. Well, I came up with something new apparently last night. Here we go. What do you all think? Congrats on maxing surgeon. All right, I'm finally ready to start questing. I'm so glad we got graceful done because our run will restore faster when standing still. And just having a higher agility level helps our run restore faster too. Uh, first quest we're gonna start doing though is going to be, I've been like writing these down and keeping track of which ones I wanna do. We're gonna start with Witch's House. We need to get some hit points levels because with only 13 hit points, we can get one shot by the Moss Giant in the Waterfall quest. Uh, I think the max hit of a Moss Giant is 14. So we gotta do this quest first. I mean, I know we have overheads, but still, higher hit points is always a good thing. We need cheese for the quest, and over here in Aggie's house in Drainer Village, there's a spawn for cheese. Uh, I'm actually gonna pick up probably like three or four of them, because I remember it's pretty easy to mess up, and you need an extra cheese every time you mess up, so I don't wanna have to run back and forth. I'm gonna buy a few water runes for the Faldor Teleport spell just to get around. Uh, I'm hoping we will get 37 magic just from like wandering around and killing things. And then we'll just have the teleport unlocked and ready to go if you have to use it. I mean like 50 water runes isn't that expensive anyways. Here's the fighting part of the quest. Now a lot of people don't have overheads when they do this. Luckily I do. I'll try to show you the method for getting into the safe spot. You have to like get it stuck on the corner here. I think you just kind of like walk back and forth. Uh, and eventually you'll get stuck on that tile right there when you keep on doing that. And then the third and fourth forms of the boss fight you just safe spot down here. And uh, yeah, we're good. All right, check out the hit points level. We are going from level 14 to level 25. Easy. And then there's four quest points too. 4% of the way done with the tile for bingo. Next quest we're going to do is Tree Gnome Village, and that will unlock the Spirit Tree Transportation. And as I always like to say, transportation is going to be super important on the account. Yo, what's wrong with this tree? Why is it growing like that? Always use protection. Usually this is the part where people try like run away, run back and forth, kind of doing one hit at a time. But luckily with overheads, that's not something we gotta worry about. It almost feels like I'm kind of cheating. <laughs> okay, kind of got a bit cocky. All right, watch the attack level. 39 attack, still no strength, still no defense, still haven't ruined the pier. Uh, two quest points. The gnome amulet is basically like a defense amulet, but a bit better. I'll put it on and show you the stats. So it's plus 13 defense for stab, slash, and crush. And then the best part about getting this quest done is that we can now use spirit trees. And because we did the grand tree quest already, we can already use the gnome stronghold spirit tree. Uh, and then once we get our farming up, we can start planting these other ones too. And we can teleport back and forth to any of these anytime. And I feel like the GE one is going to be useful for a lot of situations. Next quest on the list to do now is going to be the Fight Arena quest. And this quest is also very close by. Ah, another very difficult boss fight. 
All right, watch the attack level again. Oh look, more attack XP and no strength and no defense. Still keeping it alive. There we go though, we got the fight arena quest done. And time to move on to the next one. I think we'll go and do waterfall quest next. And then we're gonna ruin the account. Oh, I should have bought earth runes for this quest while I was in Port Serum. Oh well, Psh, we don't need food for this quest. It'll be all right. This is the part of the quest that's not very ultimate Iron Man friendly. We're about to enter Glarial's tomb and there's a long list of items that you can't bring in there with you. And besides the stuff we have in our inventory, which we could just drop otherwise, you can't bring a looting bag in there, which is untradeable. And the only way to get rid of a looting bag is to destroy it. So what we're gonna have to do is suicide the account so that way our items stay on the ground for an hour, go into Glorial's tomb, grab what we need, come back, get another looting bag, pick up all our stuff again, and put everything back into the looting bag. So let's uh, go find a place to suicide. I just used the actual Lumbridge teleport spell and sev the home teleport because I have a feeling we might need to end up using the home teleport uh, in a little bit here in less than 30 minutes. And apparently it was also a medium task for the Lumbridge diary. I want to use the suicide method in the Lumbridge cellar area, but we have to start the Lost Tribe quest, I believe, to even get in here. I didn't know that. So we're just going to quickly start the quest, suicide, and then continue on with the uh, waterfall. So once we mine this rubble right here, that is going to unlock the Lumbridge Cellar suicide method for us as an ultimate Iron Man. Without a light source, when we head in here, after like 30 seconds or something, we start getting damaged by insects. And you'll see in just a bit here, our health will start going down. So very slowly now, you see we're taking damage, and eventually we'll get to zero. And once we die, we're going to lose the looting bag. All the stuff in here is going to pop out onto the ground, but that's okay because everything will stay there for an hour. And I believe we should keep the Graceful and the Arty Cloak and whatever else is untradeable. Maybe the Gnome Amulet too. We'll see. Rip Hardcore Iron Man status. Let's head back in there. As you can see, everything is on the ground now. So I'm going to grab the items we need and we'll head over to Glarial's Tomb. I think we have a few items that we can't bring in there. So let's try dropping these and try again. I think we should be able to enter now. Okay, cool. So as long as we're not more than two minutes out here, I think two minutes, we can pick our stuff back up. Okay, got everything we need, and we are all good. Next thing to do is get the looting bag back now. This is so scary, man. Like, I know we have plenty of time, but just thinking about all my stuff on the ground, I know we're not even that far into the account, but it's just, I don't know, it kind of makes me a bit anxious knowing that it's all just sitting there. If my internet goes out, well, I guess we got RS Mobile, so not a big deal, but... We're gonna go kill some rats up here for a looting bag. It's a one out of 30 chance, and I think it'll be easier to kill them than it'll be, at least for now, to uh, kill the thugs. Hey, there's the looting bag. That was pretty lucky. I think it was like 10 kills in, if that. I was kind of hoping to get 37 magic for the Faldor teleport, but yeah, we'll get it eventually. Yeah, so we're gonna have to make two trips back and forth to the wilderness to get everything back in the looting bag, because I can't just bring everything with me right now. Such is life of an ultimate Iron Man. You gotta be really careful about which items you put in the looting bag too, because, you know, we can't just take items out. We have to suicide again and do this method all over again if I put the wrong item in there. Yo, those freaking shadow spiders drain your prayer so much. Okay, I need to be very, very careful to not drink from the chalice. We have to specifically use the urn on the chalice. I'm sure a lot of people here have had bad experiences with this part of the quest, and especially doing this on ultimate would be really, really bad. So let's make sure we do this properly. Then look at that strength level, and we've got some attack XP as well. But yeah, straight up to 30 strength. I guess we're still like a one defense pure, I suppose. And then we got some diamonds. I'm going to drop those. Later on, we'll need a diamond to get into the marketplace part of Xanaris. But I have so many uncut diamonds in the looting bag. And we should have the craft level by then to cut the diamonds so we can get in there. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm probably going to drop the seeds and drop the bars too. It's nice to have this quest out of the way. We're going to have to do this whole looting bag thing all over again when we do any of the other no inventory quests or the intronic quests too. So that'll be fun. Something else to look forward to. I left a couple items in the ground. So I'm going to go pick those up and then we'll say bye. Next thing we're going to be doing, I think we should like just knock out all these free play quests. So I guess Dragon Slayer as well we're going to end up doing. But that is where we're going to wrap it up for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying watching because I'm having so much fun playing the account. With that said though, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again next time.